Uh, talking about your guys' experience during the film, uh, Samson, I mean, uh, how did you think when you first read the script? What was your, your first thoughts? So when I first read the script, I, I felt very deeply resonated to Perry, but I also wanted to know more about each and every one of the characters' stories. Like, I actually was very interested in Alistair's story and how he learned from Perry and how each character kind of teaches another character how to be more understanding of other people in the community. So I yeah. thought it was a really important story in that way. Can you tell our listeners about the movie, like what the story is? Yeah, you know, and, and <laughs> I don't even know really. What yeah, I saw I, a trailer and it was so abstract. I loved it because yes. I wanted to click. I was like, "And what is now happening?" It looks like great acting, great cinematography. I something is going oh, on, and so I have good. no idea. So please and enlighten I, us. I think this is the best way I got to describe <laughs> it. Is uh, you know, Noah is actually plays a character named Alistar, who is like a struggling uh, gay bulimic who is uh, more worried about who he is from the outside and is not focusing enough on the inside. So he has a lot of insecurity issues. When he's dealing about his own personal growth, and mm. it's not so much about his sexuality. I really think it's more about who he's going to be when he, he when he exits out from, I guess, this high school career. And a uh, lot of these kids okay. are living in this community space. And Samson plays a character named Perry, who is a trans person, and you know, and and Samson Clink here is also a trans, uh, you know, female to male uh, actor, which is incredible. So like, what- and I have to say, Bravo for actually casting uh, gender correctly. Yeah, versus Amazing. just being yeah. like. I mean, I'm a really good actor, so like, I'd be like, um, I could do it, but no, I really can't, because I can't, I can't connect in a way that the script requires. Right. I mean, I could right. do all the method and really get in and do that research, but there's still something, there's a truth that that you've experienced, you know, Samson, that's different than my experience that I don't think really transcends the cinematic screen. Yeah. It just doesn't. Yeah. And I really have to give kudos for really casting and using trans actors when there is a plethora of trans yeah. actors and there this whole you know m- myth about oh I just couldn't find them I'm like yeah, yeah didn't right. look right. Yeah. <laughs> where got, are you looking yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> but I gotta say and I even told Samson too it was actually like you you would think in SoCal like there would be a lot of trans actors out there but it was actually believe it or not it was very very difficult process and Noah I mean uh, with especially with Noah it was crazy because we had over 450 people submit to want to be in this film no uh, way 400 150 people on Backstage.com. It was insane. But the only wow. hardest part out of those 450, I didn't get one trans actor. Wow. And I had to email my way to try to find every kind of person. And we originally did find someone before I found you, Samson. And then what ended up happening was, you know, their agency, I'm not going to say the name, didn't feel comfortable with this person stepping into mm-hmm. this role because they weren't sure what the repercussions were going to be for I that person. I think that's because it's such a raw script. I yeah. think it is a risk to sign on to something and not really knowing how it will be portrayed in the end yeah. could be a scary feeling. But yeah. I think that's the most important stories are the ones that are raw and do serve that purpose in telling a story like that you don't see every day. What's good, listeners? I'm the host of The Chris Collins Show, and if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button below and check us out at thechriscollinsshow.com. Peace!